Another commitment for Dan Lennon and the Ducks, this time out of the transfer portal. And we're breaking it down on today's episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. And we're back like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. It is Tuesday morning, January 9th, 2024, as opposed to 2023. Happy New Year to all the listeners and the viewers, Duck fans. Thank you so much for tuning in. Been a minute since I talked to you guys, just been kind of crazy busy uh, traveling all up and down the West Coast and then hopped over to Texas out in San Antonio for the Adidas All-American Bowl. So apologies for not having a podcast in a while, but hey, we are back and arguably better in 2024. And right when I got back in town, we got a new commit for the Ducks. So we're going to be breaking it down on today's episode of the pod excited to do so before we do that do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button for me continuing to grow the channel got a lot of awesome interviews out in san antonio with i I would say future but now they're current ducks for the most part five of the six oregon duck signees that were out at the all-american bowl the adidas all-american bowl i should say they are uh now enrolled for the most part So I got a lot of awesome interviews with those guys that I posted on my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know it, it's at Oregon Football Max Taurus. Just wanted to kind of peel the curtain back and give you guys a unique look at Oregon recruiting and just the guys that are going to be suiting up for the Ducks on Saturdays in Austin Stadium. So give those a listen if you haven't already. And uh, with that being said, let's, let's hop right into it. Why not? So UTSA cornerback. Cam Alexander has committed to Oregon as Dan Lennon and the Ducks continue to bolster their defense for 2024. Another transfer portal addition, the second one on defense, Cam Alexander joins Kansas State safety Kobe Savage in the secondary. And the first thing that came to mind for me after this commitment went down, was just kind of thinking how it would be perceived. I think a lot of Oregon fans would, would look at this addition and say, hmm, UTSA, we're, they're getting a guy from, from UTSA that's going to be playing for Oregon. Like, that's not exactly a big-time football, but Cam Alexander, he plays a big game. That is for sure. Listed at 5'11", uh, he told me he's 180 pounds out of Manville, Texas. Previously spent time at Sam Houston before he transferred to UTSA for 2023. He'll go to Oregon with one season of eligibility remaining. And this is a guy who I think when you're looking at his game, you have speed. Speed is one of the biggest traits of his game. Talking to some people around the program was told he runs in the high 4-2 or 4-3 for uh, the 40-yard dash. And then his coverage ability, that's really what I think he is bringing to that cornerback room under Demetrius Martin. Just looking at his 2023 stats alone, he had 17 pass breakups, two interceptions, two tackles for loss with one of those being a sack. And again, kind of like what I was saying, it's not necessarily the biggest time football at UTSA, but this guy was really stepping up for the Roadrunners all year long. The Roadrunners, played the Marshall Thundering Herd and the Scooters Coffee Frisco Bowl. They won that game 35-17. to And the newest duck, Cam Alexander, took home defensive MVP in that game after a standout performance for the Roadrunners in their bowl game. So he is stepping up when it really matters most. And I think that that's something you're excited to see if you're an Oregon fan. Uh, you're getting a lot of experience, obviously. and For them to bring in Cam Alexander, I think it says a lot about his ability because looking at the roster and the needs, I don't think you had cornerback as a glaring need necessarily. Kyrie Jackson heads off to the NFL and he was without a doubt the best corner that the Ducks had last year. Didn't always look that way, especially early on in the season, right? But 
he really kind of came into his own and developed into one of the better corners uh, that that we saw in the Pac-12 this year. So now that he's gone, I think that Cam Alexander's coming to Eugene. He told me he's going to be enrolling later on this week. He comes to Eugene with the goal and the mindset that he wants to step into that role and kind of be that Kyrie Jackson replacement. That being said, he isn't Kyrie Jackson. I just got wrapped up talking with uh, Spencer McLaughlin of Locked on Ducks about this edition, and, and we were talking about how he's not necessarily your typical Dan Lanning cornerback, cornerback right? 5'11", 180 pounds, not necessarily that lengthy, long corner that can run. He can certainly run. He checks that box. But I think that that's not necessarily a problem because if you, as long as you have a guy who can run and cover and he has – Clearly, he has great ball skills, as you can see with all the pass breakups that he had, sticky in coverage. I think this is a really good addition for Oregon. I think that it's kind of a luxury if you're just looking at the way the roster is constructed and, and where Oregon is at right now. And it gets into another interesting point for today's college football, right? Looking at NIL, looking at the transfer portal, and I spoke with Spencer about this too, but I thought it's a pretty interesting discussion. There's this talking point that those two things have really helped spread out the talent in college football today. And I think this could be another example, right? It's kind of twofold. You see some of these guys that come out of high school with all the accolades in the world, all the offers, all the stars, you know, you name it. They go to their school and maybe there's just a lot of depth at their position or maybe they just aren't what they were cracked up to be and they end up op opting to enter the transfer portal and find a new home. And what we've seen a lot this year, I've seen numerous examples of it. I'm not going to name anybody in particular, but guys that I remember covering as recruits or hearing their name coming out of high school and then you see, oh, wow. That's where they landed. Not like it was a bad school for them, or just, but you just know it's kind of a step down in terms of just the, the prestige or the level of football that they were recruited to play, right? So you see that, and you know maybe that's just the, the, the better option for them because they'll have a bigger role, whatever it is. I'm not trying to knock anybody, but that's the one side of the coin that we're seeing, right? And then on the other side of the coin, you're seeing guys that are playing at smaller schools like a UTSA here with Cam Alexander and their studs, just absolute studs on their team. And then they end up getting picked up by a, a bigger school or they end up going to a place like Oregon, which is playing football at the, the biggest stage that the sport has to offer at the college level. And it sounds kind of funny to say they're a diamond in the rough when you're getting a guy who's a bowl game MVP uh, first team all conference type of deal with with Cam Alexander in the uh, the American Conference, but it, it is kind of the point I'm trying to make, right? You get a guy out of UTSA and he comes to Oregon, ideally, right, and balls out and has a really good year. And there's probably going to be a handful of plays next year where you're like, "Who's that guy? Cam Alexander? Where did he? UTSA?" And, and, and that's just, I, I feel like that's probably going to happen at some point, right? He doesn't come to Oregon with one season of eligibility remaining unless he figures to be a pretty significant piece of this defense. But let's let's check back in the fall, right? And let's see how Cam Alexander is doing. And if, he, if he's having a big role at Oregon and having a big impact, and then they'll, they'll look at it and say, Sam Houston State, Sam Houston and, and UTSA, wow. And now he's at Oregon. And then at the end of the day, if and when that happens, it's just, hey, props to that Oregon staff. I know that um, Cam Alexander told me that Antonio Parks played a big piece in this recruitment. Maybe a guy that Oregon fans don't know too much about. He's an assistant wide receivers coach under Junior Adams on the Oregon staff and was previously at UTSA with Will Stein before coming over to Oregon before the 2023 season. But uh, he he played a role in this recruitment. He spoke extensively. Cam Alexander did about Parks's relationship, his relationship with Parks. So definitely someone you guys got to know, especially if you follow recruiting. Um, just wanted to kind of put that out there. So that was a big addition. I think this this Cam Alexander addition is a big one because 
you 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 can never have too much speed and you can never have too many guys that can cover. And I think that we saw very clearly this past season, look at the games against Washington, the Ducks did not have enough guys that can cover. That being said, Washington made it to the national championship. Washington probably, if not definitively, definitely had the best wide receiver core in the country. And there were not many teams that could slow them down. So I'm, I'm not trying to, to slander the Oregon secondary by any means. It was just, it's tough to guard those guys. So you get a guy like Cam Alexander. He's going to join the team this week. So he's, it, it came together very quickly. He entered the transfer portal on December 28th. And then here we are, January 9th. He's a duck. So we know how quickly these transfer portal recruitments move. Just some additional background on Cam Alexander and this recruitment for the Ducks. You saw schools like Kentucky, Florida, TCU, and West Virginia also be involved in this recruitment. Alexander was telling me that those were schools that were hitting him up constantly. So that just gives you a little bit of a better idea as to the caliber of a prospect he was in the brief amount of time that that he was in the transfer portal. And like I said, I was lucky enough to get an interview with Alexander and I asked him why he wanted to commit to Oregon. And, and here was his answer, quote, because of the people. Also, the environment is just amazing. Not many people travel to that side, especially to Oregon, and they don't realize how great of an atmosphere they have. The coaches are genuine. It's just a place to be. And it's just an all around good situation for me to even consider going there. So that's a little bit of insight into his decision. Uh, he was on campus for his official visit this past weekend for, for three days, and he got to meet the coaches, got to meet Dan Lanning, Tosh Lapoy, Demetrius Martin, I'm sure numerous players on the team as well. But he's also a guy that I think fits well into this defense, like I talked about a little bit earlier on in this episode. And, and I asked him, how do you feel like you fit into this defense? And here was what he had to say full interview over on ducksdigest.com. It is a free read. Quote, I feel like I fit in well. With them having a guy declaring that they had as a starter, I feel like I could come in and help fill his role that he had. Just being able to have the opportunity to even come and compete for a spot is just a blessing itself. I will say the defense is pretty dominant. A great piece of the defense is coming back, and I, I just hope to connect with those guys and hopefully have a championship season with them. So he's, he knows that he's going to have to work hard for all of it. And that was one of the things that I really uh, liked that I got from this interview, just saying when I asked him what his message to fans was, he was talking about just knowing that he's going to work for it. He said, I just want them to know that I'm willing to put in the work. I just feel like I'm one of those guys that's never going to quit on the fans. They're here every week to see something. So they're going to get that out of me every week. I'm going, I'm going to work hard enough to be able to showcase that and come out with a victory every week. So just just giving you some more insight into who he is as a as a guy as a person and as an athlete as a competitor. Uh, I always like asking this question. I feel like I maybe haven't done it enough, but just asking guys what they pride themselves on to to break down their game, or if there's a guy that they kind of compare themselves to. And he said, "So my favorite player growing up was Tyron Matthew. So I kind of try to imitate my game as far as how he plays. As far as on the field, I'm just willing to do my job to get the win for the team." just a complete shutdown corner. One side of the field is always closed down when I'm on the field, and I expect to bring that to Oregon. So certainly not shy of, or certainly not lacking confidence is Cam Alexander, the newest Oregon Duck commit. Really in this 2024 class, I know that the, the high school 2024 recruiting cycle is, is basically over for Oregon. can talk a little bit more on that later, but He's a guy that I think could definitely contribute for Oregon once he once he gets rolling with the Ducks, goes through spring practice, and and uh, could find himself as a as a starter potentially. And I think under Demetrius Martin, he's done a phenomenal job developing guys at Oregon. Christian Gonzalez was obviously a great one for him, first round pick to the Patriots, and then now we'll have to see where Kyrie Jackson ends up when when he makes that leap to the NFL next year. But Demetrius Martin has proven that he's a great developer of talent and that he's able to get the most out of these guys once they get to Oregon. 
We're rocking and rolling on a Tuesday on the Ducks Dish Podcast. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, a friendly reminder to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me. Meant to say this at the beginning of the episode, but I'm actually in a little bit of a new setting. I'm, I'm in the, I'm on the kitchen table, a little bit of the background. So hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. I need to get those blackout curtains in my room. It's just way too bright. Uh, but we are improving the setup in 2024. Definitely, definitely keep an eye out for that. But I'll get those blackout curtains up. That way, the lighting is a little bit more enjoyable for the viewer. But let's talk a little bit more about how this Cam Alexander addition impacts the cornerback room because I put out a tweet yesterday after he committed and just talking about what the cornerback room projects to look like for the Ducks heading into next year. And it is a lot of guys. So off the top, Jaleel Florence is probably your cornerback one who's returning after a great year with the Ducks. Wasn't able to play uh, towards the, the back end of the season because he was injured. So that was uh, not the greatest development for Oregon. But we know that he is super, super capable. You also have Dante Manning, who is super experienced. Hasn't necessarily lived up to that five-star billing since he's been in Eugene, highest-rated cornerback the Ducks have ever signed, but he did get an interception against Oregon State last year, so maybe he's trending in the right direction. You also have Nico Reed, who came in from Colorado, obviously very familiar with Demetrius Martin from his time over there. And you have Kim Alexander, who we're talking about today. Roderick Pleasant, also a guy to keep an eye on. He saw some playing time as a true freshman out of Southern California. Dalen Austin, another freshman from that 2023 class. He was banged up for much of the year. Solomon Davis, Sione Laulea, the third. He was a top junior college prospect nationally that the Ducks were able to sign in this 2024 class, holding off the likes of Penn State, USC, and Miami in that recruitment. And then to round it out, you have two of the young guys, Dakota Fields and Ifeo Badegwu, both six foot two, 185 pounds plus that are, uh, added to this room for 2024. So I think with, with this addition, it, it shakes things up a little bit, but in a good way. I think you obviously get depth with this addition. You're feeling a little bit more comfortable going into the Big Ten, right, which has some of the best wide receivers in the country. Obviously, you're looking at Ohio State, which has been a wide receiver factory, Penn State, Michigan, now Washington, you're still going to face. USC always has great skill talent, even though you've seen some departures there. I bet they'll be incredibly competitive from a skill point, uh, skill standpoint with players like Zachariah Branch, Deuce Robinson coming back in 2024. So we know that the Ducks are going to be tested when you're just talking about a week-to-week -week schedule, week-to-week -week basis. But before this came Alexander edition, I really kind of thought it was going to be Jaleel Florence, Dante Manning, and then probably Sione Laulea as a guy who is going to potentially be a plug-and-play so this cornerback room is looking really, really capable heading into 2024. I think that with Sione being such an experienced guy at the JUCO level, I think he's probably going to show up to Eugene ready to go. We know that he was an early enrollee and was practicing with the team for the Fiesta Bowl. But maybe you're feeling even better, I think, about Ifeo Badegwu, the true freshman, the rising true freshman, I guess I should say, or just new true freshman because – he he really performed well out in Orlando at the Under Armour All-American Bowl. And he was continually throughout the week spotlighted as a top performer. And I think one of the folks at 247 said he would uh, nicknamed him Sticky Iffy. Um, and not a lot of people are saying his last name right, but I'm pretty sure it's Obadegwu. So we'll hopefully be saying his name a whole lot in the Oregon football community, watching him for years to come. I did see him in person once this year when St. John Bosco played against St. Francis out in Bellflower, and and he had a decent game with a couple of pass breakups. I think that some of his better plays were negated by penalties, so it was a little bit hard to get. You can't take too much from one game. So I think you're feeling more confident about Ify Obadegwu potentially cracking the two deep at Oregon as a true freshman. And then the same thing goes with Dakota Fields. He was a standout guy all year long. Saw him play a couple times in person, seeing that uh, he's out in Southern California as well, out of Southern California as well. But then Roderick Pleasant. Roderick Pleasant had a decent amount of playing time as a true freshman, and I think he's probably someone that the Ducks want to get more involved in, the tw in 2024. 
And I think another thing that you want to mention here is that if you're seeing some of these young guys out there in the secondary early for Oregon, specifically at the cornerback spot, I think that they're out there because they're good. I don't think that this roster is constructed in a way where it's like when Thomas Graham was at Oregon playing as a, a young guy, as a true freshman or Diamador Lenore. I think those guys were playing more so out of necessity where it's like, Hey, you're the best that we got. And you're kind of getting thrown into the fire recruiting talent acquisition and the transfer portal has drastically changed how Oregon has gone about recruiting their roster. So now they're turning to young guys that are all Americans that are from states, cities that have some of the best football that the country has to offer. So if young guys are playing early, it's because they've earned it and because they're capable, not because they're the best option that they have. So we also have to see how Nico Reed plays this next year. I think I kind of expected him to have a bigger role last year. And even though there are a lot of guys in this cornerback room, I don't think that's a bad thing by any means. And I think you see the safety depth with Tyshim Johnson coming back, Kobe Savage coming in from Kansas State. You have Aaron Flowers, who was one of my top performers. Uh, the Forney, Texas standout. He was one of my top performers this whole week out in San Antonio at the Adidas All-American Bowl. Just really, really good in coverage, great ball skills, really, really agile, great movement fluid hips, just everything you want in a safety in my eyes. So I think that he could be someone who potentially contributes early. Wouldn't say start, but hey, you never know. The Ducks haven't seen someone play a ton as a true freshman at safety since Javon Holland, if memory serves. Maybe if Roman Kinley would be worthy of a mention there as well. He was one of the greats that we've seen play safety come through Eugene in recent years. Um, what else did I have? But yeah, speaking about the numbers in the cornerback room, maybe they'll try some of those guys at safety. I think that just given the the number of the sheer volume of guys they have at that position, maybe some of these guys see the field as a safety or in, in the nickel spot. Um, I think that the way Dan Lanning recruits, you want to get guys that have position versatility that are just really good athletes and that can cover. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a guy or two in that room that ends up potentially moving to safety or just spending some time at safety in the upcoming year just to help the Ducks kind of make up for some of that depth that they're losing, right? Brian Addison's heading to UCLA. And then Evan Williams and Steve Stevens, the fourth have exhausted their college eligibility. So you're losing a lot of guys at that safety spot. I still think that that is probably one of the spots they still have some need at maybe in the transfer portal. You just want to bring in a proven guy, but the ducks also did sign some pretty highly touted safeties in the 23 class in Tyler Turner and Cody to Canberra. So maybe those guys can step up and uh, fill a little bit of a need for Chris Hampton and the Ducks in the secondary. We'll all have to see. We do not know. That's why we watch the games. That's why we go to the practices and whatnot and, and talk to people out in Eugene. But I really like this addition for the Ducks. Cam Alexander, I think he has uh, a relatively clear path to playing time. But like he said in the interview, and I told you he's going to work hard for it. So we'll have to see. Um, but I think this Oregon staff has really done a great job of trying to identify those needs and fill those needs with quality players. And I think that Cam Alexander is going to be a fun one to watch for this Oregon team next year. You can never have enough speed. You can never have enough coverage ability as Oregon so clearly knows. But I'm really excited to see what this defense can do moving forward. I think that you also have a need potentially along the interior defensive line, losing guys like Brandon Dorless, Casey Rogers, Popo Amavai from this past year. So we'll see what the Ducks can do at those spots. They did also host wide receiver Evan Stewart from Texas A&M on a visit this past weekend. I did hear that, um, you know, kind of at various points this weekend, it was looking really good for Oregon and Evan Stewart. And then kind of coming out of that visit, it seemed like it had possibly cooled a little bit. Didn't have a lot of specifics to get into on that one, but it looks like he's probably going to take some more visits before finally making his decision. I think USC is one school to monitor there, as well as probably a handful of schools out in the SEC. But I still think that Oregon definitely has a shot with Evan Stewart. You got to continue following the visits and seeing what happens there. We know these transfer portal recruitments move very quickly. So we'll continue to keep you guys updated over on Ducks Digest. Make sure you guys 
lock in with me on social media. I'm at mTorres Sports on Twitter and Instagram. And then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Oregon Football and Max Torres. But appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to watch this video, listen to this podcast, talk some football with me, talk some duck crouton. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast.